All right, let us try this again. This is attempt number three on this video. And then yesterday I had a video have its audio stripped. I caught that in time. The first one on this I did not. So I apologize for the inconvenience. Uh, things are getting extremely weird here personally, as well as around the world. Uh, I'm talking about the Alaska volcano that is erupting or erupted yesterday. And it prompted red alert because an ash cloud bloomed 35,000 feet. Okay. In this February 2017 file photo released by the Alaska Volcano Observatory shows the Bulksloff volcano erupting as seen from on Alaska Island in Alaska. The volcano erupted again on Sunday, sending an ash plume 35,000 feet into the air. The Bulksloff volcano in the Aleutian Islands erupted again on Sunday, sending a cloud of ash at least 35,000 feet into the air and prompting an aviation red alert. The Alaska Volcano Observatory told the Associated Press the eruption began at 2.16 p.m. Sunday and lasted 55 minutes. After the eruption, the aviation color code was raised to red alert, the highest level. Now, I want to remind you guys that my theory at Thor News is the energy from the sun, coronal mass ejections, solar flares, solar wind, goes into the core of our planet Earth and creates uh, lava magma activity and that is how the planets grow and so this seems to add more uh, evidence to my theory because earth got sideswiped by a coronal mass ejection pretty much around the time this happened so I just thought I'd let you know but at the end of the day it's up to you to do your research look at the data and draw your own conclusions you see Ash can storm, ash can harm and stop jet engines. Oh yeah, this is an unedited Thor video if you hadn't figured it out by now. So I'll let you know. You see what it is? It's got fiberglass in it. And fiberglass will bug up your shiz, B. And that was F U G S H I Z Z. I was not cussing. Ash from Southwest Alaska volcanoes is a threat to airliners operating between North America and Asia when a cloud rises above 20,000 feet. Now here's the deal, man. Like, one reason I'm fascinated by this volcano is it grew a lava island larger than Manhattan and Rhode Island combined in the first four months of 2017. So this is why we are keeping our eye on this volcano. Because it's growing America, man. Make America grow again. Well, that has happened. Satellite images and pilots report Reports indicate that the cloud from the eruption reached at least 35,000 feet and possibly as high as 45,000 feet. The ABO said in its report, an observer on Alaska Island, uh, and that's weird to have an island in Alaska called Unalaska, but you know, at times it feels like the United States is very ununited states. Reported seeing a large gray white mushroom cloud form over Bogslav with the ash fall out of the west. According to the AVO, the Bucksloff volcano remains at the heightened state of unrest in an unpredictable condition. Well, it seems like a lot of things are unpredictable these days. And I would add this volcano to our list of things in atmospheric instability. Because the atmosphere has been pretty unstable lately. And I would say volcanoes adds to the instability. Additional explosions producing the high altitude volcanic clouds could occur at any time. Low level explosive activity that is below our ability to detect in our data sources, what may be occurring? Do you guys not have instruments out there? These low level explosions could pose a hazard in the immediate vicinity of the volcano. I hope they don't have much like Starbucks and 7 Lemons right under it, but I'm sure they don't. It's Alaska. Bucksloff, one of the United States most active volcanoes and this is definitely the year I'm talking about American volcanoes the most. You know, like I didn't remember talking about active American volcanoes until 2017. Strange days indeed. It has erupted 36 times in the past four months. It's a lot of eruptions. Many of those eruptions blasted plumes of hot ash high enough to prompt red alerts. From the Federal Aviation Administration, Bucksloff Island, located in the Bering Sea, north of Alaska, Aleutian Islands, has nearly tripled in size due to pyroclastic fall and flow deposits. 
Flower crusted flows are one of the most dangerous of volcanic phenomena, according to the University of California at Santa Barbara's Volcanic Information Center. They're hurricanes of hot gases and volcanic particles. And I want to say that Santa Barbara is one of my favorite places in the world. It's beautiful. It's where you can stand at the ocean and at the foot of the mountains at the exact same time. And they have pretty cool, pretty surfer ladies there. But it is in California. No one is in particular danger from the ground flows on Box Left, though. All of its exposed land is protected as part of the Alaskan Maritime National Wild Refuge. There are no instruments there. What? What do you mean? Like... It seems like a great place to have scientific instruments, man. Especially if it's erupted 36 times, 9 times a month. You know what I'm saying? My math is wrong. Who is running our science shit show, man? Jesus Christ, you got all your instruments up there looking for dark matter. What does dark matter have to do with anything? We know that lava is real. I can find proof of it right here. You know what I'm saying? We know volcanoes are real. We know volcanoes are dangerous. What the hell is going on? There are no instruments here, the New York Times reported. And researchers rely on equipment installed at other locations, as well as satellites to take observations. Satellite images from 2016 show the volcano erupting from a vent that is just offshore and underwater. Uh, there are also volcanoes out by uh, Oregon and Washington, which seem to have a lot of underwater activity. You can see these images that a new volcanic cone is being built. You can say that again. Michelle Coombs, a USGS geologist, who heads up the Alaska Volcano Observatory, told the Times in 2016, if it continues, it might build a cone that is above seawater. That is precisely what is happening. Side-by-side -side comparisons of new and old satellite images show that the island has gained about 200 acres worth of land, 200 acres worth of new land, new earth land, no American land, above the surface of the Bering Sea. Though the AVO says the pyroclastic deposits are highly susceptible to wave erosion, and thus, additional changes in the convi in configuration of the island are likely. You can say that again. Maybe I should properly. And thus, additional changes in the configuration of the island are likely. In January 2017, freshly erupted volcanic rock and ash formed a barrier that separates the vent from the sea. And for the first time since the eruptive sequence began, the AVO said in release, Oh, I read that funny too. Continued volcanic activity combined with the erosion from wave action likely will modify the island further, the AVO said, and the vent may sometimes be above and sometimes below sea level. That's important because it changes the nature of the eruption. Eruptions below sea level may become more ash-rich without the scrubbing effects of seawater. The AVO said the probability of ashfall in neighboring communities such as Nikoloski on Alaska and Akutun may increase depending on wind direction, which we'll look into in a second. More ash also makes flying to the area much riskier, the Times reported. Flying through the volcanic ash can damage or destroy a plane's engines, and large explosions have the potential to affect aviation in a busy corridor for flights to and from Asia. I want to go to Asia someday. However, the risk of some massive Pompeii like event are low. That's good to know. I'm sure they'd say, like, oh my god, the risk of some Pompeii vent is very high. Run! A lava dome may be extruded at the surface of the island, but there is no indication at this time that current activity is building to a significantly larger eruption. Um, though I doubt they gave us warnings for yesterday's eruptions. Okay, so now we're looking at, this is provided as two by CSE through uh, we'll look at Russian volcanoes, Curly volcanoes, and Monitor volcanoes. I think, yeah, here's where it's all going on, man. I call it what I call it. This is the dragon spine um, of Earth. As you can see, that a lot of the volcanoes are right along the dragon spine. Um, we're just checking out the. So this is where the ash is going, and if you notice, the ash is staying along the dragon spine. Once again, provide us to by CSE through. And this is the trajectory graphic. Is the output of mathematical models showing wind direction, speed, and different altitudes. So, 
yeah, we definitely messed up the wind. Thank you again, all of our servicemen who gave their lives so we could one day hopefully ride the ship. You know, it's like we're on America's a giant ship. And we got Thelma and Louise at the wheel. And Thelma and Louise are like, you know what? We are going to just go off the cliff. And and I'm saying, no, let's turn the ship around, man. We have no problems we can't solve together as a team. Anyway, God bless everyone. Let's hope this works. And I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Definitely don't mean to ever put up a video without any audio. Peace out. God bless everyone.